Howdy folks, welcome back to Bulls and Brass. Today we're doing a couple things. First, hi. Is it an assault weapon or is it a modern sporting rifle that fires one of the weakest rounds that's still considered a rifle? I mean, it does fire one of the weakest rounds that still is considered a rifle round. It is by far the least powerful rifle that the military in the U.S. has ever used. It is not considered suitable for medium-sized game in most of the country. Uh, maybe coyotes. I mean, people people do coyotes, but if you use a two two three or a five five six on deer in most of this country, people look at you weird, uh, and that's assuming it wasn't straight up illegal. Well. I mean, just for the record, deer are roughly analogous to humans in terms of size. So, yeah. Not not the insane death machine that they try to make it out to be. Uh, I don't know, folks. Logic doesn't seem to come into it. Uh, that's nothing new. It's very clear from the typos and mistakes that you can see in the proposed bill that they didn't even bother to go over it very well before they resubmitted it from 2017 because it still says 2017 in several places. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if you can see things in there from even before that because from before that, the assault weapon ban that it was based off of had ended and they were already trying to re-implement it. The woman has been trying to get this bill in place since the previous one expired, and she has failed miserably every time. There's a reason for that. It's a bad bill. Uh, even if you're pro-gun control, this is stupid. But it might actually pass this time. Now, why is it stupid? Well, let's start with the easiest, the most obvious. This is a 20-round magazine. It's kind of the mid-size for an AR uh, and a lot of other rifles. It's not a 10. It's not a 30. It's not a 60 or a 90 or 100 or 200 or anything crazy. It's a 20-round magazine. Pretty common. Uh, not anything special. It does not have a serial number. This is a, if, if the band passes, a pre-band magazine with no serial number. So here's my question. How are you going to know what's post-ban? I mean, it's a piece of plastic. I, it, it, if I make another one on my 3D printing machine and I don't put a serial number on it and you didn't keep track of how many I had in the first place because good luck with that. Um, yeah, so the law says you can't make a new one without putting a serial number on it, and you can't sell it to somebody who couldn't possess it already, because you can transfer, according to the law, you can transfer pre-bans. So, you're telling me that I can't have one new that doesn't have a serial number, but you don't know that it's not new. So what are, what are you looking at here? It's literally, I mean, even if you go with an aluminum one, it's some bent aluminum and a spring. What, what are you going to control? I, I can go to the local machine shop and make them. <laughs> if, if a guy at a local machine shop decides that he wants to make a thousand new magazines this month, hell, this week, in his spare time, makes them, puts them together, puts them in a box. Okay, now what? A week later, he opens the box and says, oh look, some pre-banned magazines. If you can't prove that he made them after the ban, how are you going to prosecute this person? How is this a crime? Like why, if they were perfectly legal before, 
and the exact same item is still legal, how can you make it illegal to have a new one? Do you, I mean, really? This is something, this is not a complex item. These are things that literally many people in this country have the skills to make in their garage, and not just skills, equipment, to make in their garage in an afternoon. And once they get set up to do one, they can do thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. An aluminum magazine for a rifle, for an AR-15, is very simple. It is not a, a very specifically designed anal item. It is not like some of the submachine guns where if you're the slightest bit out of spec, it doesn't work. You can be really out of spec. And as long as it fits in the gun and these tabs are roughly the right size, it'll work. So, yeah, uh, just saying, it's stupid. Uh, same thing with the guns themselves. So you're telling me I can't get a new lower. That's illegal. But if I buy one of the many, many millions of already existing lowers, that's okay. So when somebody dies, you can buy their old lowers. If somebody decides they don't need their extras, I can buy their lowers. I can buy all the uppers I want. That's not a firearm. But I can't go to the store and buy a new one. Because they're evil and scary. I, then it gets better. Because in order to make this sound better for their sound bites, they list a whole bunch of firearms specifically allowed exempt from this bill. But they were already exempt because they're not, they don't meet the criteria of the bill. Your Remington 700 or otherwise similar rifles, meaning every freaking bolt action rifle on the market, is exempt from this bill. Okay, but they're, they're not semi-automatic and they don't generally use more than 10 round magazines and the magazine limit isn't part of that exemption so yeah I guess you could somehow make them meet the criteria I, I don't remember if the semi-automatic part is the only is a overriding criteria or if that's only one of so I guess you could have a pistol grip bolt action rifle with more than 10 round magazines and a flash hider uh, or something not but Really? What if somebody makes a different gun? Uh, what if somebody makes... I mean, come on, because let's keep in mind, you can buy a Howa Action or a Remington Action or a Seiko Action and build a new rifle off of it all the time. I mean, this is a very common thing to do for custom rifles. And then they put a serial number on it and they call it a particular model and, and the manufacturer is somebody else it's not a, a Howa or a Remington or a Seiko. It's a Billy Joe Bob gunsmith. And I apologize to any Billy Joe Bob gunsmith people. That It was just a random name uh, that was kind of amusing. Sorry. So, come on. Really? If you're not going to admit that the goal is to take them all away, then stop insulting us. Because we see it. We're, the gun owners of America, and I mean the people, not the organization, although they see it too, can see what this is. This is step one, make it so you can't get new ones, which will basically shut down a large number of companies that sell parts, accessories, replacements. You know, if, if a company makes most of their living selling completed rifles, for example, they're in trouble you're going to put a lot of people out of work. You're going to shut down a lot of companies. Good timing, by the way. And then, this is going to create a run on the product. It's going to drive up prices. It's going to piss people off. And very likely, it will further concentrate these things in smaller numbers of hands because the people who are really focused on these rifles will buy more. 
even if it costs them a lot of money to buy it from another private individual as a pre-ban. This has happened before. It is probably going to happen again. Instead of diversifying who holds them, it will shrink a little bit. And then at some point in the future, you're going to require registration. You're going to say, okay, Remy, how many rifles do you have with this, this style? We're going to come look. And we're going to write down the serial numbers and the models and keep track of that. And if you sell those, you can only sell them to us because otherwise it doesn't work, right? So you can only get rid of them at that point. And if I damage it, I can't replace it. If it wears out, I can't replace it, although they don't really wear out. Uh, but things happen to them over time. And the goal is to get rid of them. Now, you've banned an entire category of firearm, not just a particular type, not just ARs, but an entire category for most of the population. But then you've said, well, if you're one of our elect few people, if you are a school security guard, a police officer, government organization, that's okay, you can have them. Now, this runs pretty counter to how our country operates historically, the ethics of our, our nation, um, the founding principles of our nation. And, I mean, this has been a complaint of mine about Connecticut for a long time because Connecticut has done this. This, is, this bill is very similar to what Connecticut already does. In fact, the whole set of bills that they've done basically recreate what Connecticut, New York, and, and a few other states already have. And except for the waiting limit, uh, the waiting period, I, I think New York has that, but New, uh, Connecticut doesn't. So it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me on its own, but it makes a lot of sense if you have this future goal. And everybody can see that future goal unless they are intentionally blind. If they are intentionally closing their eyes, then yes, this seems not so horrendous because it's grandfathering in all the run, all the ones that already exist. Now, mind you, there's a reason that they've been selling in record numbers. There's a reason that this, although not particularly the polymer frame ones, but an AR-15, let me not be speaking through it into the microphone, but an AR-15 is the most popular rifle in America. I don't, not even, it's not even close. Uh, it may still be close with, and it might, might still be losing to, the Remington 1022, or Remington, wow. Ruger 1022. But that's a 22 rimfire. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are now more ARs. Maybe not officially, but a whole lot of ARs have come into existence that are not on any official tally. Uh, that's one of the things that makes it very amusing because the market, just like with Glocks, for 80% ARs has been literally going crazy in the last probably five years, but maybe even 10 years. Because they made it easy and they made it effective and they made it popular because we could see what was coming we saw it with obama we saw it with hillary running for office against trump we saw it in the debates this time nobody was surprised that this bill was introduced nobody was surprised that this was their goal nobody is surprised by what we see as the long-term goal They've, they've said they want our guns. They want to take them away. And occasionally one of them will lie and say, no, 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 nobody's trying to take your guns. And then another one stands up and goes, we're coming for them. And they pass laws like this, or try to, to make it very clear what the goal is. So yes, people have spent a lot of time and money making guns that are not on any official list. There's no manufacturer that you can go to and say, you know, give me your serial numbers for production of that kind of firearm, which the government does. They, they get, you know, they know how many are made of, of different types. And in the, just in general, the industry tracks that. 
There's no 4473. There's no anything. Uh, you could pay cash at the store with no name registered or for anything and do some work and have a gun. And that's kind of how it's been in this country since the beginning. Because you're not saying that I bought a gun. You bought material that you turned into a gun, that you did the work. Now, this happens in every country. Firearms are produced pretty much around the world by individuals. And you can see examples of that all over the internet in various degrees of quality, all the way up through heavy machine guns. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a thing. There's, In fact, there's even jokes about it that there are sections of basically Pakistan and Afghanistan where they produce some truly incredible firearms in what amounts to a stone hut with hand tools. And they work. Uh, they, they have made some incredible things. And there's, I mean, you're, you're telling me that a machinist in the U.S. isn't going to do that as a hobby? Just, just as a, you know, no nefarious intent intended. Literally as a, well, I looked at an AR-15 and I said, I can do better than that. I can put this feature that I want in and I can tweak the ergonomics and I can cut this cool, you know, pattern into it so that it looks neat. And why would I go spend a bunch of money on somebody else's when I've got a machine right here and I've got the, the aluminum, I'll just do it. Because keep in mind, it's literally a block of aluminum a, a couple inches wide, a couple inches tall, and, and like six, six, uh, six or eight inches wide, you know, long. I, look it up. I don't know exactly what the dimensions are for the, the blank you need to build an AR-15 lower. But that's not a rare item in a machine shop. Certainly, I mean, I can call McMaster Car and go, hey, I need 2,000 of these. And they're not going to bat an eye. It's, I, I can be making anything. And anybody with a little knowledge of machining can crank them out. You tell me that's not going to happen? Really? If you pass a law that says, at this point in this nation right now, right, you pass a law that says you can't have those if they're new. You can't make new ones. Can't buy them, can't sell them, old only. That somebody, and, and can't have, you know, serial numbers uh, that are new. But there was no requirement for serial numbers before unless you were selling it. So that machinist can make as many as he wants for himself. Or he can make some serial numbers on them that don't mean anything, don't were never recorded previously because there's no tracking of them in the first place. Sell them to his buddies. I mean, it's a crime. Sure. It's a crime now to do that without uh, putting a serial number on it and tracking it. Uh, most states have some form of tracking if you then sell a firearm. And certainly if he's doing this as a business, he's in violation unless he gets an FFL. But doesn't mean he can't do it. Murder is illegal. Much more serious, right? It happens all the time. Robbery, burglary, assault, these are all crimes. They happen all the time. So you're telling me this victimless crime of manufacturing a piece of metal that was previously absolutely legal, but now they've said you can't have new ones, is suddenly going to not happen. I don't believe you. And unless you're willing to send armed men with orders to kill people, you're not going to stop it. Which means that that's what they're willing to do. They might think that they're going to be able to go a long way before they get to that point, but they're saying that they're going to be willing to kill people over something that, as of today, is 100% legal and is the most popular firearm in this country. That's what your politicians are saying, folks. Decide if you think that's okay. And then tell them, send them letters, send them emails, make a call to their office, be polite, but be firm 
It doesn't do any good to rant at them. But make sure they know that you don't think that's okay. You don't think these laws are going to do any good. You think that there are better ways for them to spend their time. And that if they vote for it, you're not going to vote for them in the future. And you're going to tell your friends not to vote for them in the future. And your friends are going to tell their friends. And you are going to donate money to the competitor that is trying to knock them out of office. So, if you got this far, one more comment, and then we're moving on for the day. I know you guys are occasionally sick of me talking about 6-5 Creedmoor, and I guess 6-5 Grendel, but it is still the most popular topic by a huge margin on my channel. If I look at my most viewed videos for the last 48 hours, it's always at the top of the list, one of the 6-5 videos. Number two sometimes is something else, but if it is, number three will be a 6-5 video. If you look at my total views on videos, it's not even close. I mean, like, 10 times the view. So yeah, there will probably be more content about that. I, I don't even apologize. The vocal minority that is annoyed with it doesn't outweigh the silent majority that goes and watches it. The other thing I have to say is actually positive about criticism. You guys, at least several of you, have said on my video about, among other things, this I get this regularly, but particularly the Magpul bipod. You tell me I'm wrong, or you tell me that I should do research on the product before I review it, or I should learn more about it, or, or something to that effect. Well, first, it wasn't a review. Uh, I didn't get that far, right? If you watch the video, I said that it was going to be kind of a, this would be part one of the video, and I would, I would do some more with it and continue on to a review, but this was the unboxing. And we never got past the unboxing because, frankly, I didn't see the point. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing good about the product. I'm not saying that the, the Magpul bipod is junk. What I was saying is that, for me, I don't think it, it's a better product than what I already had. And that if I was going to replace what I had or get another one, I would stick with that. I didn't think that the Magpul one improved on what was there. However, your opinion may differ. You may have knowledge that I do not have that I did not see when I was messing with the product. So if you want to tell me I'm an idiot, if you want to tell me I'm wrong, tell me why. Uh, I am not against that bipod. I, if you give me something you know, that says, hey, there's this feature or this way you use it that makes it so much better, or that you were looking at it wrong in terms of your, your mental perception, you know, my point of view was incorrect. Give me something. Don't just say I'm wrong. Because I'll go buy another one and keep going with it if there's a reason to. But you can't just tell me I'm wrong. I mean, you can. But it doesn't do any good. Uh, I don't know what I'm wrong about. Uh, I presented my opinion. Uh, I looked at it. And I said, it's wobbly, relatively. Not, not horribly. I mean, there's certainly bipods that are way worse. But relatively, it doesn't seem super sturdy in terms of positioning. Uh, it seems durable, don't get me wrong. And it wasn't any lighter, really. So what, what was the benefit over that Harris that I have? Now, certainly, it is in the same price range. It is not a cheap bipod, but it isn't super expensive. It is Magpul. I like Magpul. Um, I am not shy about that. I like their products. I think they do good work. Don't like all of their products, but I mean, I doubt each individual working at Magpul likes all of their own products. So... Give me something, and I'll go back and do an actual review based on that. Or, maybe I won't. But just in general, if you're going to give me a criticism about a video, or you disagree with what I said, give me more than that. Tell me why. Tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, and at least make it clear that you actually watched the video, because I love the comments where you looked at the headline... 
loaded the video long enough to type in your, you know, supposedly scathing comment and never watched the video because if you had watched the video, your comment didn't make sense. So anyway, take care, have fun, stay safe, y'all. And don't panic. Uh, you know, it hasn't passed yet. And we'll see what happens. Um, but at this point, contact your senators because they're all that are left. Um, I think. I'm actually not sure the assault weapon ban is already through the House. I know one of the other ones is, uh, but we'll see. I'm going to get this video up shortly. Uh, it'll probably be up for tomorrow morning. So that's it, folks. Out. Say hi. Oof. Oof. Oof.